When it comes down to it, when you're tasked with lighting a stage, you want somebody, your presenter, to be able to walk from one side to the other, and you want the lighting to be nice, smooth, awesome, and even. So, how do you get there? Hi, I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you and talk to you about just that. Because I know, just as much as anybody else, that you're not born with the ability to make an even stage wash, right? When I first started out with lighting, in fact, I was tweaking and working with a stage lighting system that had previously been focused, and it wasn't perfect, and as I began tweaking with it, the stage wash got worse, and it got worse before it got better. And I learned a few things from a lighting mentor of mine that really helped me understand how to make a wash smooth and even and how to repeat it and be able to do it time and time again and I want to share that with you. So this approach and what I'm going to talk to you, how I'm going to share with you how to make an even wash of light, it's going to work on any size or shape of stage, okay? So you don't have to think, oh, well David's thinking about a rectangle stage for a band or for a church or for a DJ and that doesn't work for me. Now this, this works for any type of stage. I've done this uh, with you know, good old rectangle stages, stages with curves in the front, stages with multiple, you know, decks to them, um, stages with runways, stages with large stairs. Doesn't matter, it always works the same. Now, what type of lights and what angle should you use are kind of the first questions that really come to mind when I think about lighting a stage and, and making a stage wash. The first question, uh, doesn't have an answer. What kind of lights should I use? It actually does have an answer, and that answer is all of the same lights, okay? And I don't want to be too simplistic here, but if you go and you ask someone what type of lights you should use for your stage wash, chances are if you ask four different people, you might get four different answers. And the truth is, well, everyone has their pr their preference. Most, you know, general spot or wash fixtures can make a nice even wash of light. I've made nice even washes of light with PARs, with ellipsoidals, with LED bars, with LED panels, with psych lights even. It wasn't pretty. Uh, and with moving light washes, with moving light spots. So the point is, it doesn't have to be that perfect type of light, but as we go across our stage and we're washing our whole stage, we want to have the same type of light with the same lensing on it from the same distance away from the stage. And if we get those three things right, it's going to be a whole lot easier to make that stage wash even. Now, let's talk about angles, okay? So, at any given point, you're going to want a light with two different lights about 8 to 10 feet of stage, and, and this can vary by the stage, that's a generalization. Truth be told, in situations working as a lighting designer, I've had to go wider and I've had to go narrower than that before. So, none of that is sacred. But, you, you generally aim for, you know, 6 to 12-ish feet as a zone, or an acting area, as it's sometimes called on the stage. And in that zone, we want to light it from 45 degrees up from the person on stage, and then we want two lights each 45 degrees out from that person on stage. So horizontally, the lights are each off the center point 45, so they're off each other 90 degrees. Let's talk about what's critical there, okay? A lot of people ask me, hey, David, I can't get that angle vertically perfect, I can't get the horizontal angle perfect. Am I hosed? No, you're not. The most important of those two angles is the vertical, that's why I said it first. And the reason why the vertical is more important is because both lights are at the same vertical plane, okay? So if you start to get too steep with that light, you're going to see shadows under the eyes and under the neck. And it creates a communication barrier between the presenter on stage and the audience. As you get too low, the opposite happens. The light actually, you know, generally 
isn't bad. But you get shadows, distracting shadows behind. Because we know that when a light hits you from overhead, it hits you or the object on stage, and then it goes behind and casts a shadow behind you. Okay, At that same angle, right? the light doesn't bend. Light has a great tendency of going in a straight line unless it hits a mirror. So, the as you bring that angle down, that means you're going to start to see more shadows on the backdrop. On the horizontal angle, it's much less critical to get that one perfect. Okay, Because we've got two lights coming from opposite angles, we can almost come to literally 180 degrees apart and still light both sides of a person and be able to see them clearly as they look from side to side. Now, again, you know, the more you get to the sides, you, you start to get weird shadows, you know, headed to the sides that may hit other objects. It also can tend to get a little hotter on the sides and a little uh, less bright on the front. But, you know, if you keep those guys side to side, gosh, you know, anywhere from having a single light straight on to, you know, even 160 degrees, you're going to be able to make a, a decent wash. Sure. The further you get away from that 45, um, the more difficult it's going to be to focus it and get those lights pointed nice and even. So, when we talk about those angles, that is for one zone on our stage. Now, we can break our stage up and have, you know, anywhere from, you know, three or maybe two or six zones. Um, you really just, you know, look at the lights that you have available to you, how far they're going to be away and what kind of lensing you've got, and figure out how big of a spot on stage that makes. And then that's, you know, approximately your acting area, whether that's 6 or 8 or 10 or 12 feet. You can then repeat that across the stage. When you do do your different zones, as I've talked about before, um, you, you want to keep those lights again. You know, just like the two lights on one zone are the same distance from that zone, we want to keep the zones consistent as we go across the stage. So we're going to move horizontally most of the time, and as we move across the stage, we keep the lights the same distance from the center of that zone where somebody would stand on that stage and keep those lights at those 45s the same distance onward, and it's going to help make everything nice and even, if at all possible. Okay? Now, let's talk for a minute about diffusion. When you've got your different zones, one of the most difficult things for people new to this to do is to make the transition smooth between each of those zones. Because you can have all these nice zones, but if every time somebody steps from one zone to another to another, they step through a portion of blackness, that's not very good either. That's not an awesome even wash. So how do we, how do we fight this? Well, you want to have a smooth transition between your zones. And that's why I like softer lights for washes most of the time. Because as you hit the edge of that beam, you know, just like even these inexpensive LED pars behind me, as you start to hit, you can see that there. It's bright, and then as you hit the edge, it starts to soften. And then the next guy, of course, as you come into him, it starts, it's, it's less bright at the edges and full brightness as you get into that center circle of light. And so with softer lights, you can just line those two parts up where it, it starts to fade off, you know, butt them together as you're focusing your wash, and things will be nice and even as somebody walks from one light to another. If you're using a harder edge light, like an ellipsoidal or a moving light, um, that is a uh, spot, then it's going to be a sharper light and you're going to see those transitions more so. So use some frost or some diffusion filter on those lights and it's going to help soften those edges so you get the same type of effect on your stage, a nice smooth transition. Now, the third piece of a nice even wash is some backlight. I always like some light from behind, um, a single light for each zone, and that's going to help separate the objects on stage from their backdrop. It also improves the definition of people's shoulders and their bodies and their hair, and just generally helps things look more professional because you get that higher separation. Now, when you are going ahead and making your wash, 
a few last pet peeves here for you to help you out is, you know, go ahead once you've got it nice and even, save it to a queue in your console that you recall back at the same brightness level every time. Um, because you've got to remember, even if your wash looks pretty even to the eye, it might not look very good on camera. And everybody's got a camera in their pocket called a cell phone these days. They're taking pictures, they're taking videos of your shows even if they're not supposed to be. And so you want to optimize for it, right? So do keep that in mind that, you know, as look at it on a camera and, you know, record it so that it's that same brightness level every time so that things are really consistent for people taking photos. Now, on that topic, if you're trying to make things even, you might want to look at a light meter. Uh, I've talked about light meters before, and truth be told, more often than the fancy Seikonic or even less expensive x tech meters, uh, more often than pulling those out, nowadays, I pull out my DMX Cat app from City Theatrical, which is free, and on Android phones, that app um, allows you to have a light meter, right, using your phone's light meter. It's killer. It shows you the ups and downs as you walk across the stage. The overall level is not really calibrated, but the ups and downs work well. And that's what's important when you're creating an even wash. All right, guys, that was a lot of info. And I think I've held you enough today. So we're going to talk um, later. I've got another video coming soon about different angles of light. But until then, please, please subscribe here to learn stage lighting. And if you want to help us grow this thing, join us on Patreon. And if you're looking for more help, more information, and in-depth guidance in your lighting, come join us in Lauren Stage Lighting Labs. Links for all of those are below. Have a great day.